Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I wanna talk about Atmos. So, I saw a post today on the AVS forum, and basically, this person is saying that Atmos, Dolby Atmos, is worthless. The title of their post is, Atmos really is worthless, and is is capitalized. So, immediately, I got curious because I'm thinking, I love my Atmos setup. So I'm reading over the post and it says, there's a couple things I want to highlight. One, he says that he's running his Atmos speakers. Uh, he has two of them. He has a 5.1.2 setup and the two Atmos speakers are on six foot tall stands behind the TV. So my guess is they're up high above his mains. Um, and he says, however, the problem isn't placement, it's information. The speakers are silent 99% of the time. I put my ear to one speaker and heard nothing watching the scene in Ghostbusters Afterlife where they were after that metal munching ghost. Finally, I heard a fsh for about a second and then nothing else. Then later when they were chasing it in town with the car, I heard another effect right before he shot metal out of the car. Um, he says, if anyone is spending big amounts of money for speakers for Atmos, they are getting gypped. There just isn't enough there. I'm glad I went with some cheap speakers before I put in a lot of holes in my wall. Okay, so what's going on here? So immediately, my thought was, when I'm watching movies in Atmos, it sounds amazing, and I love it. It's like I, I do experience that bubble of sound that they, they talk about. Um, so I'm curious why his speakers are are not producing any sound or essentially no sound. Um, a lot of people commented, they're like, oh, you can't, you know, your speakers are placed wrong. Uh, it's room treatments. You need acoustic panels, et cetera, et cetera. Um, none of that is going to fix a problem where a speaker just is not producing any sound. Um, so that's the first thing is he's not getting any sound. And then the second thing is from that result of hearing no sound, he's drawing the conclusion that Atmos is worthless. Now, the problem here is that he is projecting his results generally. He is assuming that what he is getting is what everyone else is getting. So I decided to test it because I'm 99.9999% sure I'm getting a lot of sound out of my Atmos speakers, but I decided to isolate to one of my Atmos speakers and then record the sound that I got. Now, if you don't know, my setup is a 7.2.4. So I have four Atmos speakers. And for this experiment, I'm only recording the sound from a single speaker. So bear in mind that there's actually more sound that's coming through the other three speakers. So, so the sound from just one speaker given how much sound I'm getting out of just a single speaker, will give you an idea of what I'm getting out of, you know, all four of them. So, um, please excuse the poor video quality. Uh, that was intentional. I intentionally recorded um, just a portion of the video uh, and to have it washed out, I left, I left some lights on so that the video would be washed out. I did that so that I can avoid getting a copyright strike. So, let's jump into what sound we get from just a single Atmos speaker.
Okay, so that was a scene from Ready Player One, and it's the race scene at the beginning of the movie. Now, as you heard, there was quite a bit of sound coming through there. Um, you know, overhead sounds, um, as well as, uh, you know, vehicle sounds, a lot of ambient sounds. Um, there, there was quite a bit of sound. I, I can't imagine um, putting your ear up to that speaker while watching that scene and and thinking, oh, I'm, I'm not getting anything out of this speaker. Even if, even if all of the speakers were running, even if all of the speakers were playing sound, if you put your ear right up to that single Atmos speaker, you would be able to hear that that speaker was producing quite a bit of sound. Um, another thing to bear in mind is that Atmos speakers are you know, one piece of, of the puzzle. Uh, they're, they're meant to create ambiance. So a lot of times there isn't, you know, direct in your face sounds coming through those speakers. A lot of it is ambient sounds, but occasionally there are, you know, kind of in your face, like that horn, that, uh, that starting horn for the, from the race. That was definitely, you know, a very, very kind of direct sound coming from the Atmos speakers. So there's definitely a lot happening there. Now, I should mention, um, for context here, my setup is running off of a Marantz processor, the Marantz 7706. And then I have an 11 channel amplifier from Yamaha, and it puts out 150 watts per channel. Um, so in the case of this guy who made this original post, I would be very curious to know, A, what is his receiver? Is it a receiver? Or is it a processor with an external amplifier? Or is he running a receiver with an external amplifier? Uh, how many watts per channel uh, is, is his setup putting out? Uh, what are the speakers that he's using? Um, the thing about home theater is that there are hundreds of pieces that have to come together to create the home theater experience. And if any one of those pieces is missing or misconfigured or out of alignment, it can have a direct negative impact on the overall experience. So I, I, I'm wondering what kind of equipment he's running. Um, the second thing is what's his source material? So it's well known, it's very well established that discs provide the highest resolution video and audio. It's completely uncompressed. If you're streaming video over say an Apple TV or a Roku, even if, even if, they claim that the source material is 4K and has Dolby Atmos, it's still going to be a compressed signal. Now, in the case of my experiment here, I am running it off of a 4K disc. All, all of the demonstrations I'm doing are off of a 4K disc played through a PlayStation 5 Blu-ray player. And so there's no compression. It's completely, I mean, it's as good of a source material signal as you can get. So for the purposes of this video, I'm not doing a comparison between uh, the results of a 4K disc versus streaming. Uh, if that would be interesting to you, the viewer, let me know in the comments and I may do a video on that where I do a direct comparison from scene to scene uh, comparing the source material differences. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of factors here, a lot of factors at play. Um, and so, yeah, let's let's do another demo. Let's take a look at another clip. Um, this one is from Mad Max Fury Road. It's the beginning. Where are you, Max?
So that was Mad Max Fury Road. And as you noticed, there was a lot of ambient sound, a lot of like mood creating sound. Um, and then some of it was very direct, like the voice, the, the voice of the child speaking through the speaker um, or speaking to the actor through the speaker. Um, and then there was just a lot of, of of sounds that that created the total image so if you think of a movie theater experience that the sound and the and the video as kind of like a painting like if, if you look at a painting it's just got tons and tons of brush strokes and all of those brush strokes even the ones that aren't totally visible or partially visible or partially obscured or or, or whatever all of those brush strokes together work together to form the total complete picture um, and so atmos the speakers that those uh, the sounds that those speakers produce those are some of the brush strokes they're not all of the brush strokes they're just part of the picture and so i think sometimes people expect uh, the atmos speakers to produce kind of kind of the main image of the picture when really a lot, very often they're they're supporting strokes if you will so now let's do one last demo and this is from the opening scene of saving private Ryan. So in that scene, uh, the Atmos speakers really worked to create the mood. You heard a lot of overhead, like bullets whizzing by. Um, when the camera was transitioning from underwater to above water, it really helped elevate that the intensity of that image and enhance that idea of going from underwater and then having you know submerged bullets whizzing by and then coming up above water and then back down below water. And I think. I think those Atmos speakers just really, really add so much to that scene. Um, I think, I think if you if you watch that scene uh, with all of the speakers running, uh, all of the Atmos running, and then you were to remove the Atmos speakers and then watch it again, I think you would notice a significant uh, loss in just the immersiveness of the experience. So, what can we? What conclusions can we draw? from this little experiment. Uh, the first conclusion is I think it's I think it's misguided to assume that the results that you get in your own setup are indicative of the results that everyone is getting. So like I mentioned before, this this original poster uh, 
he assumed that because he wasn't getting any sound through his Atmos speakers, then nobody must be getting any sound. And clearly, I've demonstrated that that is simply not the case. Um, and so the next thing, the, the next conclusion I would draw is I would take a hard look at his setup. I, I think that it would be worth revisiting, you know, what kind of equipment is he running? Uh, how are his cables? You know, I'm not talking about, you know, these ridiculously high-end cables, but I mean, just making sure that you have, you know, the basic good solid cabling. Um, are, the, are the speakers decent speakers? Um, Another thing to consider is, you know, there is a difference between running an AVR versus separates. Maybe he's running uh, just a receiver. Uh, maybe he got a $200 receiver at, you know, Best Buy. Uh, you know, is he running a $200 receiver or is he running a $1,500 receiver? Um, you know, there's just, you're going to see a broad range of results and oftentimes, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, you know, is he running a decent receiver and still not getting good, re good results? Maybe it's a configuration issue. Maybe maybe he needs to, to run his calibration, room correction, um, and then maybe adjust the levels on, on his individual channels. You know, there's a lot of factors. Um, but basically the bottom line is, I think the lesson here is don't be too rash and too quick to draw really strong conclusions such as, Atmos is totally worthless um, because from my experience, it's phenomenal. And I, I would love to chat with this guy and, and find out more about his setup and, and, and maybe, maybe his issues could be corrected and, and then he could experience the, the fantastic sound that so many of us have been able to experience. Okay, well, if you've made it this far, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this little demonstration and got to you know see and hear kind of what what's happening isolated in in an atmos track um so yeah if you enjoyed it and are interested in more content like this definitely subscribe hit the like button and until next time thanks for watching